In this video, I'm going to be demonstrating how to use Inkscape to create transparent text like you see here. So we'll start by adding some text. So click on the text tool and then type in your text and then press the select tool and then you can grab on one of these handles in the corner to resize your text. And now I'll zoom in on a portion of this so that we can see what we're doing a little bit easier. Okay, the first thing that I want to do here is to duplicate this text four more times because I want a total of five copies. And I'm going to change the color of each copy so that we can keep track of them a little bit better. So I'll change this first one to red. And then I'll press Control D to duplicate. And then I'll change this one to a lighter red and then press Control D to duplicate again. Change the color, Control D, change the color, and Control D one last time, and I'll change the color of this one to black. And then next, open the Fill and Stroke dialog box if you don't have it open already. And you can do that by going to the Object menu and select Fill and Stroke. And then go over to the dialog box, and for Blur, change the Blur to 0.5. And then next we want to increase the size of this black text. So go up to the path menu and select Outset. And we're going to do this two more times. And the number of times that you do this all depends on the size of your text. The larger that your text is, the more times that you need to do Outset. And now we're going to move the text over to the right just a little bit. So click on it and drag just a little bit to the right, just so you can just start seeing the text underneath it. That looks good. And now we want to lower this text by one level. And you can do that by clicking this button right here. And with the black text still selected, we want to select the yellow text also. So press and hold the Shift key and then click on the yellow text. And now we should have both the black and the yellow text selected. And then next, go up to the Path menu and select Difference. And to see what we did, I'll move this black text over to the side a little bit. And you can see that we actually cut out the black text using the yellow text. So I'm going to move this back into place now using Ctrl-Z. And Ctrl-Z just undoes your last operation. And now we need to move this black text to the bottom of all of the other text, but we still want it to be on top of the image. So we can do that by clicking this button right here, which will move it to the very bottom, and it'll move it even below the image that we have. And so then we need to raise it one level to bring it above the image, and we can do that with this button right here. And now click on this green text to select it. And we want to change the color to white. So you can do that by going down to the color palette and clicking on white. And then we're going to increase the size of this also. So go back up to the path menu and select outset. And we want to do this two times. And then move this white text down one level by using this button. And now with the white text still selected, hold your shift key and click on the red text. And so now we should have both the white and the red text selected. Then go up to the path menu and select difference. And now I'll move the white text off to the side to show you what we've done. And you can see here that we've cut out the center of the white text. So I'll move that back into position with Control Z. And now with this white text still selected, go over to your fill and stroke dialog box and set the opacity to about 30%. And now click on the red text to select it. And then change its color to white by clicking down here. And then we're going to add a gradient to this. So click on the gradient button and make sure that you have linear gradient selected by clicking on this button right here. And then starting from near the top of this text, Press and hold your left mouse button while you drag down 
and drag down until you get to about the center of the text. And then grab this square handle on the top and then pull it up until you get to about right here. And now we have our transparent text. And I'll zoom back out to show you what we have. So this text will work well on light backgrounds because it's got this dark shadow around the edge. And it'll also work well on dark backgrounds because it's got a little bit of white outlining it. And we have a little bit of white up towards the top of the text. Well, that concludes this video. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe and leave a comment.